20 genius Minecraft builds on another level. The Minecraft community constantly creates the most wild and ridiculous builds you can see. And that's what we'll see today. Number one, when you're first getting settled in Minecraft survival, a crop farm is always a good call. And if you spawn by a village, you've already got that covered. But what if we just can't leave well enough alone? Well, we probably get something like this. Following what this user did, it's possible, if you're crazy, to make a full out crop field biome in your world. And while the irrigation alone would be a grueling task, it's definitely a sight to see. Just make sure to stash up on some diamond hose before you try this, because the amount of durability required to till that much soil might just make your head spin. And the sad part is that this micro farm probably still has a better return on profits anyway. Number two, by this point, we're all pretty familiar with the different structures in the game. And while they're iconic, they can also be a bit bland. So what if we were to take a page out of Trixie Blocks' book and recreate these bland buildings as something a bit more upscale? And if you ask me, that comparison is definitely something to appreciate, even if building one of these takes a hefty amount of time. So while I can never imagine something like this user's desert temple ever existing in the vanilla based game, it is nice to explore nonetheless. And whether you upgrade the village, jungle temple, or even just the desert's well, I think it'll all go appreciated. Number three. Okay, we're all familiar with this guy, the infamous dirt house. And while it's functional, it's not exactly a looker and definitely not worth living in after the first night. But what if you're not ready to move on just yet? Well, this big brother might just be the solution. Sure enough, there have been plenty of variants added in just on top of the standard dirt block. And with those, we have a palette to turn this dirt hut into the Chateau de Terre. And really, if you're living in something as swanky as this, it's probably hard to call yourself a noob anymore. Though, I wouldn't bank on this for a good safe house, because, uh, obvious reasons. Number four, building another portal is a pretty straightforward process. And usually, the most we customize one of these is by making it with corners or without. But since Snapshot 13W37A, we've been able to play with those dimensions in more ways than one. And this might be my favorite example of that. See, in the community, there's been something of an unspoken competition to see who can make the best nether portal sword. And while they're all excellent in my eyes, I think this take with the electric guitar is particularly special, since on the overworld we've got the neck, and then the base of the guitar comes through on the other end. And I think that kind of multi-dimensional consistency is worth striving for. Number five, falling into a ravine is a pretty rational fear. I mean, all it takes is one drop and your legs are sure to give out. And while one water bucket could offer a fix, what if we use a whole slew of them? Well, the result would probably look something like this. Here, we take after this user makes something of a solid river connecting through the crevice. And then not only is it a lot safer for us, but it also looks quite nice. And moreover, it makes logical sense too, since water tends to carve patterns like this anyway. So if you're looking for a bit more world building to build in your world, this is on top of the to-do list. Number six, when you're building in Minecraft, it's worth considering your perspective, but sometimes our render distance can get in the way of those dreams. And that's why it might be disappointing to look down from your airship and see nothing but fog on a sea of blue. So to fix that, our answer might come down to these maps instead. See, by filling out a handful of these from the chunks below, we can lay them out in an item frame and get an impressive window effect for our floors. And then if you want less of a parallax scroll, just move a bigger gap between the glass window and the map floor, which for such a straightforward concept really has a great execution. Number seven, every now and then, the Minecraft community goes through a phase where everyone all builds the same thing. And I'll say my favorite era of that might just have to be the mini biomes you could see on the subreddit. Because through a creative use of detailed blocks like stairs and slabs, it's possible to create a scale model version of biomes that we'd usually explore. And while using something like the chisel and bits mod could clearly up the detail, I think there's enough in the base game to make a convincing diorama. Like this user who used a slime block item on the ground as a tiny version of the slime mob. That's just too perfect. Number eight. Now, scale models are clearly nothing new to Minecraft. But while we usually make our replicas smaller than the original, what if we went the other way and scaled it up? And as you can see from this set of builds, we did just that. By taking our one by one blocks and turning them into three by threes, nine by nines, and so forth, the results can quickly get ridiculous. So while I wouldn't recommend trying something this insane in survival, I'd be lying if I said it wasn't impressive. Meaning if you've got the time and you're crazy enough, then maybe a set of scaling structures like this might just be up your alley. Number nine. Now there's no shortage of mind bending Minecraft builds out there. And while we showcased a handful, this might be the most literal example of that. In this map by Amy Oak, we have a Mobius strip turned into something of a skyblock world. And from the right angle, it seems to meet the criteria, since we can only observe one side and one boundary curve on the object. And while the rigid blocks of Minecraft do make it tough to properly realize such a shape, it is still a wild sight to see. Especially if you download something like the up and down and all around mod to mess with your gravity as you explore. Number 10. Telling time in Minecraft is a simple enough concept. I mean, if you're stumped, just look up. And hey, when you disable the daylight cycle, it's even easier to tell. But if those solutions don't cut it for you, then I guess this could help out. As demonstrated, we can use centuries old technology to make our own sundial right in the game, which when partnered with shaders, let's use shadows to tell the time. So for instance, once it reaches noon, our dial will perfectly align with the circle on the floor, which is a pretty neat bit of engineering for not using a single piece of redstone. Though I might still prefer 
to spend my four gold like so just to tell the time that way. Number 11. A slime farm is a real asset to have in your Minecraft world. But once you've made all the leads and redstone machines you can dream of, it begs the question, what's next? And while that might seem daunting, this might be a worthy use for your chest of slime snot. See, we're all familiar with the concept of a bouncy castle, so why don't we follow that blueprinting game? And folks, I'm talking the whole nine yards. A full castle exterior, sticky piston bounce pads, everything to make this place into the hot spot for hopping. And hey, if you've got a riptide trident, then it only takes one rainstorm to make that bounce pad even better. Number 12. Cooking our food is a pretty basic concept. And by this point, even cavemen have figured it out, so it's not that difficult to grasp. But what if we want something a bit more interesting than just a Stone Age form of cooking? Well, this might help us reach the modern age. By placing some hopper minecarts on top of our campfires like so, we can overlap the entities to make a fairly convincing stovetop. And hey, the smoke will even pass out through the top, which is a nice touch. And since we can still use the campfires below, we can cook our food and then collect it once it pops up into the minecarts above for an easy to use system. Number 13. With the 1.18 release of the Caves and Cliffs update, we got a huge change to the way that our biomes generate. And while that's great, it's still has some players wanting more. And in that case, I think creating a custom biome is a fantastic project for the new landscape. So sure, that might sound like a daunting task, but once you look at the incredible results of something like this, it's hard to argue it's not worth it. So if you're already spending the time to upgrade the base game structures, then why not house that new desert temple in a revamped or reworked biome as well? And here's hoping it'll be as cool as Cub Fan's Dripstone Canyon. Number 14. Traps are a tale as old as Minecraft itself, but while there are plenty of flashy ways to imprison or blow up your pals, this might be the best way to hold them accountable, since with the Dripstone Spikes, we can make something of a functional guillotine for our use in our Minecraft worlds. Sure enough, you tuck the culprit underneath the trap door and have a system to let the spike fall far enough, and then you can have quite the public display. So while I wouldn't recommend it for any kind of quick attack, this might be a way to keep those hackers in line, just as long as they're not wearing a helmet. Number 15. If you've ever built a mob farm, or any automatic farm for that matter, you know plenty well that you have loads of items to worry about soon enough. And while hoppers offer a solid solution to that, they are a bit boring, and definitely not visual. So why not add in a bit of fun between our farm and our chests? Like this honey wall, where the different item drops fall down like rain through the sticky surface. I mean, it's not the most functional, but that extra time might help to cut back on bottlenecking. And plus, it just looks really nice as a testament to your hard work. If you ask me, that's worth something. Number 16. When you're fighting foes at night, it can be easy to just jump into a ditch and call it done. Which, don't get me wrong, is functional, but we can do so much better. So why settle for a hidey hole when we could go one step further and build ourselves a proper tactical hill? As this post lays out, we can use a mix of redstone ingenuity partnered with grass blocks to build something fit for both defensive and offensive purposes. Then all we need to do is hop in, flip the switch, and use the gap that we created to fire off a few arrows towards the nearby baddies. And as long as you're not getting chased by a baby zombie, that should do. Number 17. Once you take down the ender dragon, there's not much to show off your victory. I mean, there's the egg, but there's only one of them to go around. And that doesn't seem fair for a group effort. So if you want something to show off for all those involved on the server, this dragon skin rug seems like a perfect pick. Plus, it's a pretty funny sight gag, so that doesn't hurt either. And by adding in little details like buttons for scales, there are subtle ways to make this a really solid addition to your living room's floor. So if you're not already using your dragon's head for a piano, this has got to be the next best use for them. Number 18. I'm going to go out on a limb and say that dying isn't a fun time. A bold statement. I know. And when you see this screen, it normally means that hours of hard work have just gone down the drain. And in fairness, this might also be a waste of time, but in a very different way. See, taken after this user, it's possible to recreate a pretty convincing death screen within the game, which I think is great. And hopefully it's the only one you'll ever have to see on your hardcore world. Just make sure it's made with the right FOV in mind. Otherwise, that illusion won't last more than a passing glance. Number 19. Now, I think every kid with a dream has tried to make one of these at some point. And while the Aether Portal is an iconic site, unfortunately, it's only possible with the mod in question. At least, it was until this glitch. See, in Bedrock Edition, it's possible to glitch out waterlogged stairs like so to leave floating blocks of water in the air. At which point, we make our glowstone frame and get ourselves a legitimate looking Aether Portal replica. And while the water blocks unfortunately disappear once we save and quit out, at least the illusion lasts long enough for your friends to be fooled. And as far as I'm concerned, that's all it needs to do. Number 20. If you've ever watched a professional builder, you'll hear the term block pallets come up a bunch. And while they're useful to guide your project, here, the block pallet is our project. And by taking the time as others have to lay out a comprehensive gradient of blocks, we can get something pretty special to explore. And honestly, taking the time to study one of these layouts is a verifiable crash course for any building hopefuls. So whether you want to lay this out as a reference point or make the pattern into a build itself, it's an experiment worth trying in both cases. And with that, folks, have a good one. All right.